fans. Yeah, so much love and hugs. Uh, yeah, it was great. And tell me, how did it all begin for you? When did you think about becoming an actor? As a, not a hobby, but a thing to live, to profit from. Um, I did a TV show when I was 15, 16. The half brother. Right. Ah, good, good man. Uh, and um, I was finishing um, middle school? No. Yeah, middle school. And um, I thought of it as, it as a lot of fun. That was the point when I really realized I can make a living doing my passion. Because I was doing a lot of theater commercials before that because my mother worked in theater. So um, after Half Brother, I went to high school where we had a fantastic um, drama line. And we had a high, like a high school musical um, comedy. I don't know what it's called. In Norwegian it's called Revi. Um, and that's where I got my um, happiness from doing it, standing on stage, exploring my um, acting. All right, so in which kind of acting are you best in? What do you feel is your, your major? Comedy, drama? Uh, you know what? I'm the kind of person that don't want to live in, limit myself to one kind of acting. I really have to try before I know. But... Personally, I watched all those genres, so I really like to try humor, drama. I've, I've done mostly drama, but humor and uh, action, like good action movies, I love it. I would like to see it. Okay, and when did the Scum approach you, saying, we need a new character in our show, maybe you would try, why not come to the casting? Yeah, it wasn't just like that, because... As we talked about to yesterday, it was a huge hit in Norway, the first two seasons. So they put an ad out in the newspaper, and it says, like, we're, uh, we're seeking new actors from, uh, from Norway between the age of 17 and 19, I think. And uh, I was just in that area. So um, they didn't contact me. We had to send in... Uh, resume. To All right. See, like, so you have to fought for it. Oh, I fought for it. Yeah, it was two or three rounds of different kinds of uh, auditioning. So uh, first round was uh, with another guy who were auditioning. So we were playing against each other. So it was it was two rounds, and uh, the other round was I came in and there sat Tadia and Julia, and I, I I was watching the show, so I was like, oh no. Oh, do I have to do this? Uh, I was kind of awkward in the first, but Tyra was so natural, and uh, he knew what he was doing. I, th I, th I think he was doing it the whole day, so um, I was the last one getting in, so um, it was great. And how long it would it take to receive an answer from them? It was momentarily, or a week, or a month? Uh, it was after the first edition, it was the day after. And after the last edition, it was... Because after the last edition with Tarai, uh, Isaac, um, I felt really, really bad. Because we had an improv, uh, improv uh, exercise, which uh, we went into something like, uh, he's going to tell me that he had sex with my girlfriend. And I, I was going to re react to that. And I was so committed. So when I left, I was still in that funk or that feeling. Um, so I got home and was so depressed. I was like, oh, no, I screwed this up again. And then I got a cell phone, then I got a cell phone from Julia, who was like, so, Henrik, what, uh, what would you say if I told you that you were the new character in Scum? And I immediately started like, yeah, yes, oh, yeah, of course. <laughs> a little more than that, but I can't do that on stage here. <laughs> It was okay. great. I see we have a, a little bit crowd with the questions, so I think we will start. Yeah, cool. All right. You can stand up. Come on. Uh, hi, Henrik. Hi. First of all, I love you. I just wanted to say. Well, I love you too. Oh, nice thank flag. You. <laughs> thank you. Okay, so I have two questions for you. First uh, is, uh, 
What is your favorite song from the soundtrack of Scam? I hope you say Gabriel. I love Gabriel. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, uh, you know what? The day we actually shooted that scene, uh, well, the day before, Yuli came to me and asked me, we're having this scene tomorrow, and we want you to sing in it. <laughs> and I was like, okay. Um, I'm not that comfortable with singing. I like singing alone. I love singing, but not in front of people. I get uh, you. Uh, so sh she was like, do you have any suggestions to songs? And she really wanted to be a Norwegian song. Mm -hmm. So I was first like, maybe Aha, Take On Me. Have you heard that one? <laughs> yes. Yeah, it goes like... Doo -doo 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 go on, go on. Don't yeah, stop. no, 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 no. I'm, I'm not going to start. Uh, but then she was like, no, it's too classic. And uh, this hit, Gabriela's song, was the biggest hit in Norway. The year before. So everybody knew the song, but people were kind of tired of it. You know those songs that go on the radio yeah. for ages and you're like, oh, I don't want to listen to this song. So I, I really enjoyed it when I was um, trying to memorize the, um, the lyrics. Mm -hmm. uh, and now I love this song because it has a special meaning for me. I do too. But uh, <laughs> do you know what she's singing about? Yes, <laughs> I, yeah. I checked the translation. I, I can't speak Norwegian. Can I mean, you tell I all learn. the other people what it's about? Yeah, of course. It's uh, basically about five nice girls out on town having fun. Yeah. Deep. Uh, and I was going to think about that. <laughs> nice. Okay, yeah. so the second question is a little bit more deep. Is If there were a, to be another season of Scam all about Evan, uh, what do you think it would be about, and what would be his inner conflict he would have to overcome? Um, you know what? Since Scum is now being uh, internationalized in a way that they're making uh, Scum from every country of the, like, eight countries, I think, now. Yeah. Um, and Yuli is a part of making as well. So... To answer your question, if it's going to be a, another season, is it going to be like a reunion season or something about everyone? How's the life is? I think that's what all the actors dream of. In like 10 years, maybe 20 years from now, hopeless, uh, after a good career, we can go back to Scum and like still be good friends and have fun on set. Okay, thank you. Thank you so much. And I'm curious, do you have any but who should play your character in uh, all of the versions of the international? <laughs> no. <laughs> uh, you know what? I don't think they're going to make um, the same characters. I think they're going to really? make different characters all right. uh, based on what kind of people that uh, are from those countries. Um, I don't think Nura and William is a special, especially... Uh, not necessarily a Belgian kind of teen, or Isaac and Evan isn't especially uh, American kind of teens. So I think they're trying to make it as personal as they did in Norway, so trying to make characters that are real to the people who live there. Okay, so it will, will not be a real copy, like one-to-one -one of the show? That no, I don't think so. All right. Yeah. Second question, please. Hi. Hi. Uh, so first of all, I think most of us are wondering, it's Evan Beck Nesheim, or how do you even pronounce it? Evan Beck Nesheim. Nesheim. Yeah. Okay, thank you so much. And my question is, you played a bipolar uh, character. So my question is, have you ever had an experience with bipolarity before the show, or it was it just like first thing ever? No, actually not. I've, um, well, I think the, um, maybe, I might have been with people who has it, but that's the issue about um, uh, psychological disorders. You don't always see them. Um, the people who has them don't always know about it. Um, they're not diagnosed for their uh, uh, treatment. No, they don't get treatment for it. So, doing the uh, bipolar character, it was mostly about not doing a stereotypical.
bipolar character. I was very looking into um, famous people who has bipolar disorders. So what what did this disorder do to you? So I would imagine like Henrik being here and uh, Evan is like here. So he has a bigger top and a lower bottom. And to find those true feelings, not just to uh, portray them, um, was the most important for me. Because I don't know how, to, uh, how the uh, bipolars has it. I probably not gonna, but I did my best to put myself in his shoes. And I think you did the great job to like showing people that it exists, right? So that people, more people get treatment for it. Yeah, right. <laughs> and that was one of the most amazing things about actually doing an acting job that really meant change for some people. I've run into several people who actually figured out their uh, diagnose from watching Scum and was like uh, the scene from the hotel room was like, this, I'm struggling with this. This is what I'm struggling with. And they never got the diagnosed. So people come up to me and said, I changed my life after, after I saw Scum and saw uh, the character that I did. So that was so cool. And um, that really means a lot for me. Thank you so much. No, Have a thank great you. day. <laughs> thank you. Hello. Hello, hello. <laughs> uh, okay, the phone is more important, come on. <laughs> yeah, I agree. Uh, my question is, do you like Polish girls? Do, do I like Polish what? Girls. I Polish am. girls, yes, you're so beautiful. <laughs> yeah. Uh, of course. Okay. That, How you that was it? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> How will you receive plenty of the mail from Poland right now? This yeah, I got a lot of letters uh, last night. It was real nice. Really? Yeah. Like they brought it to your room in the hotel or how? Oh, no. <laughs> We, uh, on the signing booth. Okay. Yeah. Hi. So it's so nice. Hi. Hi. I have. I would like to tell you that you are amazing, first of all. And Thank you. I have a question about how did you feel about acting such real serious? A scam, like it was taking part of in real life for, for us, like in real time. How did you feel about it? How did I feel about doing such a real show? Uh, yeah. I thought it was really fun to actually have um, something not very fictional, uh, something that people actually believed in. Uh, and I know some fans actually believe that we are the characters that we portray. Uh, and that's the negative side of it, because it's very good to um, to see an audience. I think the reason people feel so touched and f really feel with everything that happens is because of this, because people believe in it. And I see a lot of fiction where I don't believe a second of it. And then I... I'm not able to feel with the characters, relate. So um, it has a very positive side and a negative side, as everything. Okay, thank you. Thank you so much. Hi. Hi. Uh, first of all, I wanted to s thank you for portraying Kevin so beautifully. <laughs> and my question is, uh, I was wondering, do you think that meeting Isaac uh, makes uh, Evan feels more like himself, more open and uh, more naturally. <laughs> yeah, I think when um, Evan meets Isaac, he really sees that there's a part of me I've never uh, examined or, uh, or looked at. So the big part with Isaac and Evan which makes it so magical is that they're so free because they're breaking out of like the chains and everything. Um, and they really could be themselves with each other, be more gentle, be more nice and actually um, make other people feel well as well. 
I think you are right. Thank you very much, and I love you. <laughs> no, thank you. I love you too. Hi, Henrik. I'm Hi. Magda. And I love all the cast of SCAM. You guys are so amazing. Thank you. And I wanted to ask which scene was the hardest and which one was the most memorable to shoot? You said uh, which one was the hardest and which one was the... Was the uh, most memorable. The normal? Scene. Memorable. Memorable? Yes. Yeah, okay. Um, I must say the... the um, it, there's two scenes I'm must pull out. First of all, it's the locker room scene. We talked a little about it yesterday. Uh, because we're standing there and there's so many motions to get through. And we had a lot of freedom in our manuscript, so we could say basically what we felt was natural, but... So you could improvise a little? Yeah. Um, some of those scenes where we really had to feel something, we had to feel that it's real. So if there was something in the script that wasn't natural to either me or Tyra, we was like, we have to say something else. But Yulia was very cool with it. But the most important thing is, is like, when you go through a script, it's many points that you have to get through. So uh, there was one point where he was like, I, I ditched Sonia. Now I can be with you. And then he goes down again, and then he got up again. And it was like, that was very hard as an actor to go through a lot of emotions in one scene. But like the technical, the, the worst technical scene was uh, the one in the waters. Uh, behind, underneath the water. That day was crazy. We started so early, got up to this beautiful house in Oslo, who has a swimming pool in the basement. And there was uh, like twice the size of the crew than we were normally used to because they had to have two underwater camera guys, two people that were like, if we suddenly drown, they have to get us up. Um, so it was a lot of people and just uh, working underwater and doing technical stuff underwater was a very new experience for me. Uh, but when we saw the pictures afterwards, it was so cool because the results were amazing. And uh, we actually did the, the, you know, the biking scenes with Isaac uh, sitting behind Evan with God costumes and Julio Cesar costume. We did that after the bath scenes, like 11 o'clock at night. Uh, we were so tired, it was raining. We had to go back and forth this same street because it's not that easy to ride a bicycle with a guy on the back sitting like this. <laughs> it, it, it's much harder than it looks like. So those two scenes are, uh, was the most hard, but uh, some of the most memorable scenes as well. Uh, but you asked what's the most memorable scene? Mm, the last scene with everybody I in. So. Yeah, the last episode. Uh, because that day was so fantastic. Uh, we started out early. Every actor, actresses, every uh, producer, like everybody was on set and we had a really nice dinner as you saw in Scum. We actually ate the food. I think there's one scene where I'm like, throwing the food into my mouth, like sticking some food into Isaac's mouth. Uh, so a beautiful day and so memorable. No, but you know, it was very sad. I don't think we even realized now that it's over. And uh, I wanted to ask also, judging by your experience, is the plot of Scam any similar to the uh, reality of school in Norway or is it just serious and that's it? It's a stereotypical view of school in Norway. Since I was uh, included in the third season, I already watched the two first seasons and was like, no, 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 no. This is not my experience of high school. Um, but in the same way, they had to do this with respect for every school in Norway, all the way from the south to the north. So. It was a stereotypical view of the high schools in Norway. Um, but I, I, didn't I didn't really 
feel like this was my experience of high school. But it's one experience of high school, if you know what I mean. Yeah. I understand. But it's a typical Norwegian high school. But okay. Hartvik Nissen as a school is not as scum as on uh, Hartvik Nissen. It's a whole different thing. Okay, thank you very much. And thank I you. hope uh, you'll come to Poland. I soon. love it. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. And you were saying about your last day. Did you guys take any souvenirs to have to remember the show for for long ages, or you just eat the dinner, go home? That's it. If you can keep a secret, guys. Yeah, probably. <laughs> <laughs> it's only steaming live on the Facebook, so yeah. Um, you know what? The last day we were at the production office at NRK, and uh, they were like, "We're not really allowed to do this, but." Uh, you can pick out some outfits from Evan's closet that you really enjoy. So I have um, the Biggie t-shirt, the Levis jacket, and uh, some other memorabilia. Like Evan has also a book where he scribbles and a bouncing ball. So yeah, I still got that. Hi. Yeah. Hey. Hi. Hello. Hi. First of all, great to have you here. And I guess I have somewhat of a more serious question, and that is whether or not you have been subject to homophobia after season three premiered, and if so, how did you deal with it? Yeah, that's what's so crazy, because I actually was put in a shoe, like, as we talked about earlier, um, portraying a gay character that people believed in. So people actually believe that me and Tarai is gay. So that's one of the most common questions I get. Are you really gay? Okay. Uh, no. So uh, I was put in the shoes as a gay man. So every time I went out, people were asking me constantly, are you really gay? And why does that even matter? Why do you have to know that? And even going out on a bar, I really experienced homophobia in Norway where I didn't believe that it, it was a big thing. So that was so awful. And um, that really opened my eyes that uh, we're not there yet. We're not, like, not everybody has no judgment, unfortunately. So I thought it was really horrible to see it with my own eyes, but I got to experience it. And it's not nice to be called a fucking faggot or like, it's not cool. And why does people do that? Well, probably because they have it really bad with themselves. So, yeah. So, to would you have any tips for dealing with it on a daily basis for some people? I think it's very important to know that it's nothing personal. You can't take anything in life personal. If somebody says something horrible, even if it's not homophobic, something mean to you, it's more about what they're struggling with than what you're struggling with. And if you can live a life without taking anything personal, you're going to be very happy. Thank you very much. Thank you. Haters going to hate. That's, That's what, what they say. Yeah. Yeah. You cannot do anything about it. Hello. Hello. Hey, I remember you. <laughs> Thanks. How do the bra Ida? How do the bra Zach? Congratulations on uh, Chesinando uh, Music Award yesterday. Yeah, that was so great. I I went home after this and watched it mm -hmm. uh, on my hotel room. Mm -hmm. I hope you are not sad that you couldn't make it yesterday. I did. Uh, well, but all the boys were there except you. I know. <laughs> I was watching it at home. Was like. Okay. But I would rather okay. be here with you guys, so, uh, yeah. Go on. <laughs> Good answer. Uh, well, um, everybody says that Norway is uh, top three, the happiest country in the world. And I wonder why, but think about it. This country is a homeland to Henrik Javla Holm. So they are <laughs> the luckiest one. <laughs> And uh, what SCAM did, uh, well, it did uh, a lot of serious things, important things. 
but it gave you to the world. The most outstanding actor, really. The thing that you... Thank you so much. Yeah, did in Ohelganat. When you don't say a word and convey so much meaning, a masterpiece. And, uh, and um, uh, call that girlfriend, well, another masterpiece. The thing what you do with your eyes when you were singing Imagine and you stopped because you got scared of the balloon squat and then in the same glance um, you conveyed love to Isaac, masterpiece. Well, thank you, you so much. You deserve all the acting awards, but I also want to say that you deserve the Nobel Prize. First oh, of all, yeah. oh. uh, first of all, Peace Prize, because you made so many people's lives much better. Well, then the Chemistry Prize, because you and Talia put chemistry on such level. Unbelievable. <laughs> thank you, thank you. But most of all, you deserve a Nobel Prize in physics. You, Taria, and Julia Andam. Because you developed something, a new scale, you know, like Richter scale measures the strength of earthquakes. So there was no scale to measure love. Oh, that's until, beautiful. Until EVAC came. So, you developed the EVAC scale. So, I say, free EVACs to Donald and Melanie Trump. May <laughs> maybe five, when they are in front of cameras. 100 EVACs for Romeo and Juliet. Um, 1,000 EVACs for um, Kate Winsland and Leo DiCaprio in Titanic. Let's say Henrik Holm and Leah Mayer, 200, 121 EVACs. And then comes Isaac Val Waltershen and Evan Backnessa, 1 billion EVACs. <laughs> is there a question in yes, this yes, cluster? Yes, it's, it's a beautiful poem. You should write. Uh, I, have a, actually, I have a, a lot of questions, but I will ask just one, a little one. And I don't want you to tell the truth. The answer is simple, and think about it. Vakoka. Don't uh, tell the truth. Uh, elve, elve. <laughs> <laughs> Vakoka. Okay. First, translate the question, because I she don't know says, this language. She says, what's the clock? Shuen, and Shuen. tells me not to tell the truth? Yes, Shuen Shuen. Shuen Shuen. I said 11, 11. Shuen Shuen. Sers? I agree. Sers? 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 What the hell is going on? <laughs> <laughs> no. I okay. love the control uh, of the panel, and I don't like it. I was trying to uh, reenact the scene, yes, uh, uh, in episode four. Yeah. Yes, when Isaac, Evan asks Isaac, Vakloka, Shuen Shuen, Sers? Yeah. Vistiker, Nush, Nush was. Okay, you know all the uh, manuscript, that's great. <laughs> I didn't even remember that. Bravo, thank you so much. Hello. Hi. So, first of all, I want to thank you for coming here because I'm actually traveling from Belgium just to meet you. Oh, wow. Welcome. So That's thank a long you trip. very much. <laughs> thank you. Um, uh, my question is a question a lot of people ask, at least a lot of my friends, and which are fans, of course. So, this is very important to us. What about behind the scenes part two. We need it. <laughs> I know you've been wondering about that. You need it? Yeah, it's been like four months. I know. Yeah, we know too. <laughs> they are counting. I, I, yeah. Actually, I've, uh, I've um, thought about posting it. Yeah. But it has to be the right time. Okay. Yeah. And uh, but. And I can promise, right like, 
Within a month? Okay. All right. There's some special dates coming up, you know? That's good. I, ha I, I want it to be like an uh, anniversary kind of. Like. You will be forgiven. But <laughs> you never know. Maybe I have yeah. part three and part four as well, so. And maybe part five. I don't know. <laughs> Thank it you. It will so be much. a saga. You have to save the good stuff. Thank you. Thank you so much. Okay, we have time only for two questions. Hi. Hi. I really want to know if you, as a person, uh, when you were in the school, did you take part in the Rusbus? The Rusbus? Yes. I did. Yes. Yeah. Oh. Can, you, <laughs> can, <laughs> can you tell us something more about like it, how it looks like? Yes. Actually, uh, in Scum, Rusbus is portrayed as a very, like, now it's Rusatid, and it's a lot of work. You start in... Uh, first grade in high school, uh, like, who's your friends, who can I be in a bus with? And you find your friends, and there's like groups of both guys and girls who get together and start discussing, like, first of all, we have to have um, something called Deknam, which is like the first thing you release, which is like, we're these, this crew, but like, Three months later, you come out with a concept, which is going to be the concept for the bus. And then you get uh, artists to make music for your bus. A lot of work. <laughs> a lot of work. You have to paint the bus. You have to. It's a lot of logistics. And suddenly, when you use like uh, maybe 25,000 slotties, you're like, okay. Now it's the rest of the time. And you go on partying every day, every night for one month. And it's absolutely exhausting. Hi. Wow, sounds really cool. <laughs> Thank you. It's very cool, but I'm so glad that I'm done with it. It's one of the most exhausting things I've done in my life. Thank and, you. And our last question for this panel is... So, hi. Hello. Um, my question is, what is one thing that's come taught you? Excuse me? What is one thing that you learn, learned from being in SCUM? I learned so much from being in SCUM, first of all. Um, not just as an actor, but as a person. Being around such wonderful persons and uh, Julia on them, which is a genius, really um, affects people. She really uh, influences a lot of people. and. What I saw her do with uh, entertainment in Norway was maybe uh, like one of those things I learned very much about as an actor that I want to do things that really affects people, not just make common entertainment, but real characters that really affect people and makes them feel something. And that's what I think is magic about television and movies. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Okay, the last one. One more, come on. Salah, Henrik. No, um, two more, come on. <laughs> You're stretching sorry. the time, man. Oh, sorry, sorry. Uh, wait, um, when you playing a bipolar, uh, it's affect you something? Uh, I mean... When I, when I play what? Uh, when you played a bipolar, uh, it's affect you some some way uh, when, uh, because you said uh, that when Tarya said he was banged, your girlfriend, uh, you're sensitive and so so forth. So uh, you feel you feel yourself like you maybe uh, uh, have a bipolar. No, I mean it's. I know affects what you, you or not. Uh, you have a depression or something. What kind of effect that did on me? Uh, Going into the role? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, as you say, I'm a very emotional person. Yes, emotional I'm wreck, that's oh. what they call me. Uh, but I think as an actor, you have to have a lot of empathy for what you do and for the people you're portraying. Um, so trying to go into those tops and bottoms mm. I could really stay there for days because this uh, requires a lot of technique 
When I got to the bottom, all the laying in bed scenes, uh, I was really depressed for uh, days after that because I really didn't have the technique to get out of that funk yeah. as well as that top. So that day we played the um, uh, hotel scene. I was so, uh, because it takes a lot as an actor to get to that point. You yeah. have to really engage yourself with, as I said, yeah. Henrik is here. Yes. I have to give a little extra to get up uh, there, right? And, and you was here, or you was there, but you're playing like you was. Woo. Right. Right. Yes. Oh, it's so a masterpiece. <laughs> <laughs> well, all right. It takes a lot, uh, but I think the funniest thing, uh, or the best thing about doing acting is doing what challenges you, mm. not just being comfortable on the surface, yeah. but actually digging deep into their feelings. What would Evan feel if Isaac did this to him? Yeah. But yeah. that's the pain of the actor. And I have to stop you Thank right you. here because the cat woman gives me the eyes. Uh, we Hello. have to finish. Thank you very much for having here us, answering all the questions. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I love you all.